Chapter 22 Cyrenius adopts Joso. Says Cyrenius, Lord, this boy I would like to take into my care, and if he wants to join me, then I shall not only make him the equal of my children, but place him above them in everything. Verily, I should count it among my greatest blessings if this dear boy, who is more angel than man anyway, I count as my own. He will find it hard to get on with his erstwhile parents anyway, and it is questionable as to whether they shall still accept him. But I am aware of it all, and can make arrangements for his parents, whom I know to be much in favour of the temple, to quite easily recognise their Joso with time. They shall be free to accept him, on condition that he has to remain in my house and to be with me where I am, at times in Asia, in Europe and in Africa, because his wisdom has my highest regard. Say I, work it out with Jairus and the boy. It is all in order with me, because everywhere the boy, my beloved Joso, shall remain faithful to me. Says the boy, Father, of this you shall surely not be doubting? Unless you yourself were to place different convictions into my heart. But this you shall not do in all eternity and hence I shall also remain faithful to you forever. If I had the choice of deciding my future being upon this earth, then I would forthwith stay with you, because what could there be more exalted, better and more blessed throughout all of infinity and in all the old and new heavens than to be with you, the arch source of love, wisdom and all life? But this only is the real innermost desire of my heart. Say I, that you would like to stay with me and eventually also will do so is attested by your entire being. But right now, you are still in need of some rest, which you have need of in outward isolation from me, so that a firmer integration between your soul and your new body can take place. When this has occurred in the course of about a year, then it will be quite all right for you to come to me again, and you shall be able to maintain yourself quite well in my proximity, without me having, with the power of my will, as right now, to hold your soul fast to your body. Behold, that is the reason why for your benefit I let you leave me for a short while. Just ask your own mind whether you would like to go from here with the Roman Supreme Governor Cyrenius or whether you would rather return to your earthly parents. It does not make any difference to me. Only that it is true that with Cyrenius you could win more than as an apparent stranger in your parents' house for they will not know for quite a while what to make of you. Says Joso, Very well. Now that I know this, I shall go with the distinguished Governor Cyrenius. I should nevertheless like to see my parents and find out what sort of perplexed faces they will make on seeing me. Says Cyrenius, This we will be able to easily bring about tomorrow, when we shall be going through Sidon and Capernaum. When at lunch at my brother's house, whom you see here on my side, and whose name is Cornelius, tomorrow at Capernaum, then besides some leading officials of the city, your parents also shall be coaxed to the table, giving you a good chance to see, hear and observe your parents, and what sort of comments they make about you but you shall have to guard against giving yourself away too much by some remark on your part. They shall not recognise you by your clothing, as I intend having you dressed up like a Roman in a toga, 
from my wardrobe. But as said, you shall have to watch your mouth to not betray yourself before time. Says the boy, Let not this trouble you, for I have quite a good command of the Roman tongue, as well as the Greek, and shall therefore speak in these if asked anything. My parents, of course, also speak this tongue, but this should not matter. In short, with the help of the Lord, who awakened me, all this shall be presented in the most appropriate manner. Cyrenius presses the boy to his chest, kissing him and saying, In short, I love you exceedingly, and from now on regard you as my son, whom I love above my natural children and many other children to whom I voluntarily became a father, as with yourself. For you shall greatly benefit them with your spirit. Says the boy, I am looking forward to this, for it has always been my greatest pleasure to make myself useful to anyone. Say I, Very well, my Joso. If I see that you faithfully keep to your resolution, then I shall also convey power to you from the heavens, with whose help you shall then be able to work even greater good. But what this power consists in, you shall become aware of only after receiving it. But now let us take our rest, for midnight has overtaken us. Tomorrow is another day, and I shall not look in advance into what it will bring but we shall rather accept whatever it will bring. The good shall be our portion, and the bad we shall know how to reject. Let us therefore go to our rest. After my words, all go to seek their rest.